outbreak of the coronavirus. Cases in Arizona are nearing the 100,000 case mark and some neighborhoods have it worse than others. The Arizona Department of Health is reporting an additional 3,500 cases in just the last 2,400 or 24 hours rather and that pushes our statewide total to 98,000. Based on these numbers, Arizona is likely to have its 100,000th case of COVID-19 by tomorrow morning. And the best way to determine how coronavirus sped, spreads is through contact tracing. But one Arizona lawmaker claims Maricopa County is falling short. We spoke to Congressman Greg Stanton earlier this week, and he claims county health leaders did not have a contact tracing system set up in time, putting us in a bad spot during the pandemic. The county initially set aside 4% of the millions that were given by the federal government for contact tracing. Governor Doug Ducey also set aside members of the National Guard to help with contact tracing on the state level. Congressman Stanton says now it's about preparing for the next big wave. I think they ought to be preparing aggressively now to bring on the thousand or more people that it will take to really do contact tracing effectively uh, in this county because when the virus does slow down, we need to be uh, ready for it. So they blew it on the front end, but they better be getting prepared on the back end. 12 News reached out to Dr. Rebecca Sunshine with the county's health department. A spokesperson for the county says she will not be available to talk until sometime this week. The county leaders did tell us that their contact tracing investigative team is growing and that they're working seven days a week. While we cover daily case numbers and even deaths, there is one statistic that we don't always talk about, and that's recovery. Data from Johns Hopkins University shows 900,000 plus people in the U.S. have made a full recovery. And while this is good news, doctors want to stress the road to get there is paved with challenges. NBC's Dr. John Torres has more on what happens after a patient leaves the hospital. For nearly three weeks, 48-year-old Selena Hafiz lay in a New York hospital unconscious and on a ventilator. The Florida mother was visiting her sick father in New York and likely got the coronavirus from him. I texted my husband and I said, I'm not feeling well. If something happened, don't come to New York, no matter what, that you have to be there for the kids. That text message was one of the last things she remembers before going to the hospital. I started to cry that day knowing that now my sister was so good a week ago and now she's in this condition. But Selena is a fighter. She was able to get off the ventilator and out of the hospital. But what she and her family didn't realize was that the fight was far from over. She couldn't talk, she, her memory wasn't there. Doctors are now learning that recovery for COVID patients can take months, especially for those who have been on ventilators. We very quickly realized that these patients had very specific impairments that we had to take care of. So weak, they suffer lasting effects, including trouble walking, talking, swallowing, and memory loss. We've just never seen the volume of patients like this. We've never had a unit full of people in their 40s and 50s, uh, so debilitated and so disabled. Dr. Susan Mautzer, Chair of Physical Medicine and Rehabilitation at Glen Cove Hospital in Long Island, New York, says it's part of a condition called post-ICU syndrome. Are these patients going to be left with lifelong issues? I don't know if it'll be lifelong. A lot of our patients are experiencing nerve damage, specifically these patients. Um, it will take a long time for them to heal. Dr. Mauser says a combination of physical, neurological, and occupational therapy is helping patients, like Selena, make progress. It's a long road ahead. I'm still not myself. I get tired very, very fast to go up the stairs, to come down the stairs, and it's, it's hard. Nearly two months after being released from the hospital, Selena is still in New York as her body continues to heal from a disease that still has so many unknowns. COVID, it's not something to play with. It's like a monster living in your body. Dr. John Torres, NBC News.